So uh, this and the next two questions, they are kind of in the same question type. They are, um, I guess it's a, a calculation involving specific capacity type question. So I'll try to do them together. And um, looking at this, I have a feeling that I need to look up a constant. So let me uh, bring up a page for doing that now so that I can kind of have uh, easy access to it as I'm trying to answer this question. So... Um, the constant that I need, I think uh, it'll be, let me look at the table of contents to see <laughs> where it should be. It's going to be under specific case. So section 1.4, probably, let's look. Uh, there should be a table of constants somewhere here. Yeah, so I'm going to be referring to this as I answer the questions. I've tried to use all from alpha to look up specific it's earlier and it's not all that rely, reliable. So I think it's better for me to just manually look it up and use the numbers that way. So this particular question, it asks me to sterilize uh, some mass, glass bottle, glass is the important part, baby, I don't care. <laughs> We must raise its temperature from 22 degrees C to 96.7 degrees C. So um, it's giving us the initial temperature and the final temperature. And it asks how much heat transfer is required. And uh, so there's an equation formula that you have to know. This is something that you might remember from your chemistry class. This is one of the uh, a few things in thermodynamics that we cover in common with the chemistry. And it's almost, uh, from my perspective, it's kind of intuitive because uh, to the amount of heat transfer that's required to effect some temperature change. I think a lot of people would have intuition that it's going to be proportional. So to make this a proportionality equality, it's a matter of um, uh, coming up with the right coefficient. So to make this equality, you need the right coefficient. And as you're thinking about those coefficients, I hope you have a sense that amount of heat transfer needed is going to be proportional to amount of mass, amount of how much material there is. So that means one of the factors I should is, use is mass. And that leaves us to one space for coefficient. And this is what we call specific heat capacity. It's the uh, experimentally measured coefficient that will turn this uh, proportionality relationship into an equality. So I have the amount of mass. Uh, I can calculate the temperature change from 20 to 96.7. All I need is specific heat which I've already uh, brought up in this table. I go find the glass. Uh, let me get the, the unit that's going to be convenient is going to be this one. That'll give me energy in unit of joule, not kilocalories. So glass has 840 uh, joule per kilogram uh, times a degree C. So amount of heat, it's going to be, uh, let me do this in Wolfram Alpha, uh, kind of directly. And let me show you a, a kind of a feature of Wolfram Alpha that's really convenient. So I need to put in the specific capacity of glass. Uh, that's uh, 840. And I'm just going to type in joule per kilogram times degrees C specific capacity. And for mass, normally I would have to do unit conversion from grams to kilogram so that the numbers come out right. But with Wolfram Alpha, I can simply say 45 grams. And uh, for the temperature change, I would say, okay, 96.7 degrees C minus 22 degrees C. Uh, final minus initial temperature. And Wolfram Alpha should take care of this unit conversion. So it'll properly convert grams to kilograms and cancel out and give me a number where all the units have been properly handled. So I first double check that Wolfram Alpha understood me correctly. Looks like it did. Good. And then it's giving me an answer in units of joule. So 13, um, 13 comma. 4,000, <laughs> um, 150, uh, or yeah, four significant figures. If you keep a minimum of three significant figures and round correctly, the system should grade your answer correctly, but maybe I didn't program this question. Um, let me keep four. Uh, did I make a mistake? It's <sighs> equal to. Oh, okay. Wolfram Alpha made some mistakes somewhere. Uh, that is, um, uh, 
um, surprising. Yeah, I, I, I actually um, am not sure where O from Alpha went wrong. It's uh, um, whatever he calculated is clearly wrong. So uh, let me not <laughs> let me not worry about that too much and just enter the answer that I know is correct and then move on. <laughs> um, I, 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 uh, so temperature units are sometimes tricky because it's uh, um, de degrees C, Kelvin. Sometimes that confuses O from Alpha. Let me just give that one try. Just change it degree C into Kelvin. Because in this particular context, it doesn't make a difference if it's Kelvin or degree C. So, um, yeah, so if I had to give it Kelvin, it would have calculated it correctly. I think um, something in the degree C must have confused it. Who knows what? Okay, let me get to the next two questions, um, which should be in the kind of similar type along the, uh, let me use eraser. So, okay, it says, to help prevent frost damage, some amount of water, I begin to notice that I probably won't be needing this, so I'm gonna clear it. Uh, amount of water is sprayed onto a fruit tree how much it transfer out of water, of course, as the water freezes. So it's getting to uh, phase change. So I need more than specific heat. I need, um, I need to look up the, the, the latent heat, which should be listed under section 1.5, phase changes. And if I look at the hint, that's probably what it's gonna say. So I'm looking for water freezing. So it's going to be latent heat of fusion. Uh, somewhere in this table, ah, latent heat of fusion of water down here. Okay, good. So let me just uh, have this available on the side. And the expression that I would need to use to calculate the amount of heat, again, you can almost intuitively guess it, um, although, you know, you can also look it up from the book. The way I would guess it is, once I am familiar with the, the idea of latent heat, then I would say, okay, the amount of latent heat, it's going to be proportional to, not temperature change, because with latent heat, there's no temperature change, but with the amount of material. Um, so amount of mass, that should still matter. And um, to turn this, um, oops, I'm using wrong symbols. The late amount of heat should be proportional to the amount of mass. And in order to turn this proportionality into equality, what you would do is to come up with a coefficient, a coefficient of proportionality that would turn this uh, proportionality into equality. The coefficient times the amount that it's proportional to. And that coefficient is the latent heat of fusion in this context. So for water, that's uh, 334 kilojoule per kilogram. And uh, let me <laughs> carefully use Wolfram Alpha again. I'll just be careful to, just to use Kelvin units, not degrees C. Uh, it, a degree C might confuse it. So I'll just use Kelvin units. Uh, actually, I don't have to this time because temperature doesn't change at all. So the coefficient, 334 kilojoule per kilogram times amount of water, 8.4 kilogram. So that should involve heat transfer of 28,006 kilojoules. It's 2800 to 806 kilojoule. And um, let me just double check that that is correct. <laughs> and how much would the temperature of the 235 kilogram tree decrease if this amount is transform the tree, okay. Uh, so I'm back to using the uh, heat transfer, heat specific heat capacity expression. So um, using the intuition that I had before, I had to say amount of heat transferred, it's gonna be proportional to the temperature change, proportional to amount of mass, and to make it into equality, you need a specific heat capacity. And we are looking for this, so I need to solve for it. I'm just gonna, in the interest of time, I'll do it in my head and get that amount of temperature change is going to be heat transfer, which we have, divided by specific heat capacity, which we'll look up, times the amount of mass uh, of the tree, which we are given. So let me, oh, wait, they're given the specific heat capacity, so I don't have to look it up. Let me just uh, type it in. 
so this was the amount of heat. I'm just going to use that. Divide by specific capacity, 3.3 kilojoule per kilogram times Kelvin. <laughs> so I don't confuse all from alpha. Uh, and then this times the... Um, uh, this is... Uh, this times amount of mass, 235 kilogram. And I'm making sure the parenthesis includes the whole thing so that I'm dividing by product of the specific capacity of mass. And uh, this kind of error, if I somehow did mess up the parenthesis, that would show up in the units that Wolfram Alpha calculates. So it understood me correctly and it's correctly giving me answer in Kelvins. And as far as you are uh, dealing with the di uh, differences in temperature, Kelvin is basically the same as degrees C. So I'm just going to put in 3.62 degrees C. Because uh, the, the offset that you have in the definition of Kelvin to degrees C, that doesn't matter when you are calculating differences in temperature. So that's the second question of this group. Let me do the third question of this group. And... Um, and see, it says, on a trip, you notice that some amount of ice lasts some amount of days. Some mass of ice lasts an average of one day. Okay, so this is some sort of a duration of time. Your cooler, what is the average power? And you should remember the definition of power, the way power is defined is some change of energy. So in this case, it would be heat transfer divided by duration of time. Ah, that's why they are giving us duration of time. Entering the ice, if it starts at zero degrees C and completely melts to, ah, okay, good. That makes things easier. So it's going from the same temperature to same temperature. The only thing that's changing is the, the phase. So you only have to worry about latent heat of fusion. So uh, I'm just gonna um, look at the amount of heat transfer is the latent heat of fusion, uh, the, 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 the coefficient, times the mass. Um, so that'll, that'll give us the heat for here, and I can divide it by delta t to get me the power. Let me do all the calculation just in Wolfram Alpha. So um, latent heat of fusion of water, I had it, uh, 334, yeah. Oh, I did 3034 30, kilojoule per kilogram, already had it. And I have the amount of mass of the ice, 4.35. And this time I'm dividing this by the duration of time, one day. Oh, I can just say one day. And um, maybe not spell out one, but one day. And again, the wonderful thing about Wolfram Alpha, it'll do the unit conversion for you. It'll you know how many seconds is in a day and it will be able to do joule per second and give you some answer in unit of what? 16.82 watts. That sounds pretty high. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it, it's possible my intuitive feel about um, the kind of heat liquid into cooler is not all that good because I'm not a cooler expert. <laughs> but this feels like it's, uh, I thought this is cl fairly close to average power usage of a refrigerator. Like if you average it over a day, it will be like a, a three, four times this. It feels high to me, but <laughs> we'll see. Um.